how's everybody doing today? I'm here with Yossi Abraham um, with, uh, with Zappix. Uh, he is the president of Zappix. And this is the next installment of Coffee Talk with Brohawk. And uh, we're, we're gonna be talking a little bit a little bit about virtual IVRs or visual IVRs um, today, not virtual IVRs, uh, everybody has those, but visual IVRs, um, you know, we, we definitely wanna, wanna dig deeper into this, this topic because it's one that, that uh, we, we've seen in the industry is really um, having a, 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 an impact on, on uh, customer experience and, and the employee experience. But with that, um, Yossi, uh, thank you very much for, for taking time out of your day uh, to have this conversation okay. with me. Um, can you tell folks a little bit about you and, and what your journey's been like with Zappix? Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me. And every time that the, the word coffee is uh, mentioned, I'll, I'll be happy to be there as a coffee addict. Excellent. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm with Zappix for the last uh, three years. Um, and uh, what we provide is, is mobile on-demand customer service solutions, which is really geared towards the people that are using their mobile phone, but not only, it's really geared towards the people that are an, around the mobility. You want to be served wherever you are, whenever you are, and so on. And you know, if you remember pre-COVID times when we used to travel and people went to airports <laughs> or bus stations or trains, you know, sometimes you need to check the status of a claim while you're on the bus or on the train or waiting for your airplane. And yeah. You don't really want to speak with an agent. You want to do it in the via a type, some type of digital self-service, and this is where we come into the picture. Excellent. We do it using visual IVR, on-demand apps, and outbound engagement. Um, so we're a startup company based in uh, just outside of Boston, and uh, we are serving today about 40 customers uh, from around the world in okay. multiple verticals. So how long has Zappix been around? So Zappix uh, has been around a couple of years before I joined uh, before I joined them, but they had a different business model. It was more geared towards a native app that you download. It was B2C company. And then due to some changes in management, they, they changed the company to become really a B2B company. And quite honestly, it's a B2B, B2B to C company. So okay. we are selling to businesses and the businesses are supporting their customers. And the main goal is to improve customer experience while we help our customers reduce their costs. Excellent, excellent. And, and you know, that's that's a, a challenge that I, I think a lot of companies are, are, are facing is, you know, you gotta get those costs down, but you also, the customers have an expectation of the level of service um, that, that they expect from, uh, from, uh, uh, from companies as a whole. Um, so what challenges do you see like visual IVR solution or mobile on demand uh, type of applications, um, you know, solving? What, what are the challenges that it's really solving? So, first of all, the last year has accelerated so much of the digital transformation that companies have maybe thought about, uh -huh. but have not yet implemented. And the last year, you know, we have seen so many discussions with the prospects that became customers or, or continuous uh, discussions with prospects that really understood that in order to survive in today's economy and uh, competitive landscape, you, you have to show agility, you have to be digital, you have to mm -hmm. be flexible in the solutions you provide to your customers. And, and indeed, many, many companies provide the omni-channel, as we call it in our industry, multiple yeah. ways to communicate with a company, but voice is still king. And yes, are, it is. Tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of calls coming into call centers every month. And we, our goal is to help them deflect somewhere between 25 to 30 percent of those calls, so they should not go to the agent. They can be managed by the visual self-service, and this is how we help our customers. So it's it's really um, it's really getting those those transactions or uh, the transactions that that aren't um, like really in depth, um, getting those off of the agents, uh, you know, uh, plate rather than uh, tying up additional FTE. So it really frees, does it really free up the the FTEs to do other things or, or what are you seeing there? You're exactly right. So yeah. we, what we've seen, what we've seen is, 
is the Pareto principle being applied here also. Okay. And I, I really believe in Pareto principle in everything that we do in life almost. And, uh, and, and it's the same, it's applicable here too. Mm -hmm. But what we see is that typically about 20% of the use cases, what are the reasons people calling into the call center create 80% of the volume. Yeah. And when you really analyze them, you see that they are repetitive calls, mundane calls, low value add to the organization. It can be, what is the status of my order? I want to submit a claim. I want to check a status of a claim. I want to update. I want to reset my password and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And they do not pro provide a lot of value to the business. And you also, one more, one additional thing, you really, really don't need any type of empathy or a com complex solution that requires an agent to handle yes. them. So when we are helping the call centers deflect that away from the agents, it allows the agents, first of all, more time to handle the more complex high value add calls. And second of all, it's many call centers are suffering from shortage of people today. <laughs> and exactly. and uh, because of the COVID-19, because of the move to home and so on, and we're helping them bridge that gap of, uh, of the shortage of uh, people. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. You know, one of the things that, that you just said that really resonated with me, um, you know, was was the the fact that that you have people that are calling in, and it's create creating eighty percent of the of of the volume that's coming in. You know, you, when you have your customers calling in, and what's interesting is those eighty that those eighty percent of the more transactional calls, um, the things that that can be easily handled through handled through a self service model, um, is probably um, increasing a level of frustration um, for customers. So the the calls that they really need more empathy on, or um, they they need to be more on 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 target for uh, for the agents, um, they're they're stressed out, they're burnt out already. Um, yeah. They don't have a time to breathe between those other calls, and then when they actually get one that that uh, you know needs a little bit more attention, uh, kid gloves, hand holding, whatever the case may be, um, that it's it's hard to it's hard to get to those uh, to that level of of expectation. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, um, are you seeing a lot of folks being being repurposed in the in um, in the contact center organizations that that you support? Um, you know, for instance, I mean, if you're if you're able to reduce FTE count um, for a company, are, are you seeing those people being repurposed to 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 do something else? So we see a couple of things. One one is really being repurposed for uh, a different type of uh, of uh, activities. The second second part, as I said, is to bridge the gap of recruitment of uh, onboarding new ones because they are mm -hmm. short on uh, short on uh, an agent for that time yeah. and uh, it can also be just allowing as we said with the same amount of agents but to allocate their time a bit different so they are not mm -hmm. stressed to finish the call so quickly because we are taking care of those mundane repetitive calls they can have another one or two minutes per complex high value call uh, for yes. themselves yeah, so it becomes more a solutions-based um, conversation as opposed to um, uh, you know I, I got I got to finish this call in four minutes you know yes uh, yes you really try to solve the problem of of the person that you're talking with. So with some of the companies that you've worked with, um, what are some of the success success stories that have been shared back with you? So I will I will share a couple of them. Uh, First of all, we have uh, one of our partners has a lot of retail customers and, mm -hmm. and in retail, it's very, you know, they are, they are really, almost all of them have that, that peak in, yeah. in November and then in December and then it drops down again. So one of the, the main areas we support our, our customers in the retail is that we allow them not to recruit so many people in during that peak time, peak time which is really a challenge mm -hmm. because we help them deflect during uh, that call and, and these are really you know calls like where is my order what is the return status i want to initiate a return and so on so we help you know just flatten a bit better that peak uh, that peak another one is uh, we recently launched a solution for roadside assistance mm. and roadside assistance you take this 
uh, call and instead of someone is stuck on the right side of the road and, and now they wait seven, eight, 10 minutes for the agent to answer. And then what, what do they do with the agent? They basically fill out the form. You know, what is your policy number? What is the, what happened and so on. And then the agents will send out the truck. So what we did, we created a visual IVR for that customer. And we took that uh, handling down from about seven to eight minutes to less than two minutes for the for the person basically receiving the text, opening the visual IVR, completing yes. all everything there, clicking a button, and when they click submit, we are now working with the automation with our customer to automate all of the process of sending out the truck to the right place and, and so on. And here we're utilizing geolocation. We can grab it from the GPS mm -hmm. the phone, smart forms. We we use APIs in order to pull the policy information and so on. So that's another success uh, story that we have. And the third one I'll mention is actually coming from healthcare, which is not really visual uh -huh. idea, but it's all about digital engagement. Mm -hmm. So healthcare is somewhere around five to seven years behind the e-commerce side and everything around digitization. And uh, one of the uh, um, main main things that we see today is the consumerization of healthcare. So healthcare okay. providers are trying to, to become more consumer-like uh, handling of their, of their patients. Mm -hmm. And what we do for them is that we provide them with, for example, very uh, visual, easy to use appointment reminders. So okay. you get it, it's not just a text, it has a link where you can confirm, cancel, get directions, add to calendar and so on. Uh, we build for them an, an on-demand app, basically a, a web app for mm -hmm. that practice, for that department, because no one will really download an, a native app for a certain department. But here we allow them all the content that they want to, to have there. And the last thing we are about to launch for ex is, is a solution for gastroenterology. Okay. And for all those that have had colonoscopy, for example, when you have this piece of paper telling you seven days before, stop eating this, four days before, <laughs> start to eat this, and two days, and you don't really remember. So we are going to send text messages with a link to the exact instructions seven days before, five days before, three days before with the exact instructions for those times. And the purpose of all of that is to improve the preparedness before coming to, uh, to the appointment. And that's, of course, increases the efficiency, but also improves the customer or actually it's here the patient satisfaction from, from uh, this interaction. Yeah. So, you know, rather than having to reschedule because, oh, I forgot to do that at this time, um, they'll have that, they'll have that reminder coming through to them, yep. um, you know, whether it's- At the exact time. Yeah, at the exact, exact time. time. Three days before, two days before, different reminders yes. based on the medical regimen. Set it and go at, at the patient level, not necessarily you know based yeah. on a date. Um, you know, one of the other things that I really like about the about the platform is, you know, I, I don't have to download anything else on my on my phone. You know, um, once I'm once I go through the the company's IVR, whoever I'm calling, um, you know, I can get a request. Hey, do you want do you want a uh, visual IVR experience? If so, press one, and we'll go ahead and, and shoot this text to your app or to your phone and it becomes it comes over as a, as a text message that a lot of people save their text messages. So yeah. the, the, the redundancy and the scalability of, of what can be done with that is pretty high, I would assume. You're again, you're absolutely right. And, and what we see is that typically three months after we launch a visual IVR solution with our customers, 50% uh -huh. of the visits are actually coming from repeat customers nice. that don't even call the, the, the IVR again. And so you're absolutely yes. right there. It's uh, we are helping our customers with the digital transformation and with a shift from voice to dig digital. Oh, fantastic! And you also mentioned about geolocation. And you know, as we're as we're starting to see the end of of the COVID uh, the COVID era, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are are checking in with their counties or their healthcare providers, whoever, um, say, okay, I'm ready. And then it becomes they have to be online to go ahead and um, and choose what facility. Well, you know, a, a company that engages with a visual IVR, they can not just get um, what facilities are closest to them, but also the driving instructions yes. uh, to them as well, um, which 
which which which is is really good for not just um, you know the 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 current COVID um, vaccination period that we're in, but I would think also you know with IVR retailers like grocery stores and and um, uh, you know other retailers that that may have multiple locations within a geographical area. Um, yeah. And even simple things like, you know, find a store near me, find a, an office near me, mm -hmm. uh, find a, a dentist near, you know, and whatever. Yeah. Uh, so using, we can use the, the entire scope of all of the features of a mobile phone, whether mm -hmm. it's your location. Think about another uh, capability, which is taking a picture. Yes. So I recently called my insurance company because I had this, we had a small leak uh, and, and I needed to report uh, a water leak in the house. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I had to call my insurance company and then I waited again, seven, eight minutes to the agent uh, to answer. And then the agent answered. He asked me a lot of questions. How do you spell Yossi? How do you spell Airbnb? <laughs> and all of that. And then after seven, eight minutes, he said, okay, now I'll send you a, an email. Please reply with, to the email with attachments of pictures of the damage. And then, uh, and someone will contact you tomorrow. And I said, why? Why I could have done all of that in, in probably in less than a minute, use my phone to take a couple of pictures, attach it to the form that we built, and that's yeah. it. And uh, so using all of the capabilities of the phone, a video FAQs, cameras, okay. and so on. So you, one of the other benefits of like a visual IVR that you can't get from talking to an agent is you can get links directly into their knowledge base. You can get links directly into, uh, you know, a, a company's CRM where, you know, it could actually impact the cost of, of goods and services provided because you don't have that added expense of, a, of an additional 17 or $20, um, uh, $25 an hour, um, you know, customer service um, representative, which they serve a very valuable purpose. But if you can, if you can really get get the get the customer to where they need to be faster and get them the answers that they actually need it, the customer experience is just mile high at that time yes so and one more thing i will add to what you said because you mentioned yeah. the word revenue is that don't forget that with visual ivr you have a captive audience yeah what we can do is always put any kind of a banner with promotion the coupon mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that you have uh, recently purchased uh, this uh, shirt why don't you here's a coupon for 20 percent off for yes. purchased pants for example and and then you're taking this interaction this customer service interaction and you can uh -huh. transform it you know into a potential revenue generating uh, experience that's awesome yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the big box re retailers, you know, they're okay with giving you, um, you know, a store credit, you sure. know, with, to return anything as long as it's something that they sell because they know that you're going to come back and sell uh, and buy, you know, two to three times, um, yeah, exactly. you know, that as well. So what a what a great idea for revenue generation um, in, in a digital world. Yeah, excellent. Um, so as we start to get to wrap up here, Yossi, you know, I. I got you in the speed round now, all right? <laughs> so what fact about Yossi would people be surprised to learn about you? Oh, I'll say something that no one will ever guess. Okay. Is that Paul McCartney one, once took a picture of me. Whoa. And, and uh, I need to tell that story. And you know, I, was, I, I used to live in, uh, in London uh, uh -huh. several years ago. And, uh, and I was sitting in a Starbucks there with my laptop and suddenly, Outside, I see Paul McCartney just in front of me, uh -huh. and uh, and he's looking at me, and he's taking out his phone, and he's taking a picture of me, and I was in shock. And the person sitting by me said, "Did Paul McCartney just take a picture of me?" <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. Uh, and then after after he left, I had to go out and see is there something there. So I went out of the Starbucks, and I saw that. He just had a promotion with Starbucks and they had like this one-sided stickers <laughs> on, the, on the glass. And, and so he took actually a picture of himself, but I was just in front of him. So. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll keep it simple and say, Paul McCartney took a picture of you. That's it. There you That's go. It. No said. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so you, you, you've lived in many places throughout the globe. You've, yeah. you've traveled a lot, um, both for, for business and personal. What's your ideal off the grid location? You know, just someplace to kind of go and clear your head. So 
you know, people will be surprised, but I, I would actually say Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. I, I love uh, going there when it's not on a business uh, trip or anything like that. Uh -huh. uh, just, you know, this is my place where I actually wind down and I, I like to sit on a poker table and just, you know, forget about everything and, and, and focus on that. And then something else would be just to sit on the deck outside when the weather is good here in New England. We have like two, three months of that in a year <laughs> with, with a good whiskey and a cigar and, and just uh, that's it. That's awesome. I, I, I will. I would love to join you in in, uh, in Las Vegas sometime or even in New England, two of my favorite places myself. Yeah. So. <laughs> Excellent. So if someone wants to learn a little bit more about Zappix or, you know, potentially get a demo or, or dig a little bit deeper into um, a challenge that they're trying to solve, where should they start? Uh, first and foremost, our website, um, okay. com. You can contact me on my uh, LinkedIn or my email, yossi.abram at zappix.com, and we'll be happy to answer any question. Excellent. Yossi, thank you very much. This has been very informative. Great discussion as always. I love chatting with you, my friend. And you. Um, you know, thank you for sharing uh, some, some information that people may not have known about visual IVR and, and how it can really uh, have a positive impact on, on businesses and, and customer experience. Perfect. All thank right. you so much for having hey, me. Thanks a lot, Yossi. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.